Hey guys, uh, this tutorial is on uh, IBO View, which is a visualizer program, and um, I will show you how to download it, install it, and very quickly how to use the basic features. Um, and the last thing that we will look at is how to import um, a file from Orca into the IBO View to um, visualize the output and the molecular orbitals. So let's begin. Um, first, if when we go on the um, the official website, it's ibioview.org. Uh, this is what it looks like, and uh, IBO stands for Intrinsic Atomic Orbitals, which is a very interesting idea. Um, so if you're uh, if you want to understand really what uh, how it works and how you obtain them, you should definitely read the, um, the papers that are referenced here. Um, it's been developed by Gerald Knizia. I hope I pronounced it properly. I'm so sorry if I don't. Um, and um, so the, the idea is um, somewhat similar to NBOs, but not exactly. So the idea of NBO, um, natural bond orbitals, is that you try to find the Lewis structure that is the closest to the, the orbitals that you currently have and you kind of jam them into that Lewis structure. But the problem is that this is not a continuous thing. You can't find the Lewis structure for all the, the, the confirmations that you find along um, a reaction path. So then it's not a continuous flow and change of molecular orbitals. But this intrinsic atomic orbitals idea um, is, is based on a different um, kind of uh, base is based on a base oh boy um, it, it's it's a different uh, kind of concept and so uh, this allows to have a continuous change of molecular orbitals throughout the reaction path you can really see the electron flow kind of um, along the along with the change in the conformations and it's really um, fascinating to to see when you um, compute the the IBOs for um, a reaction path but first let's let's uh, do the the simple things we we'll, let's install it um, and see how the the basic stuff um, works the installation happens as follow you click on the download link either for windows or linux and mac it will be like a zip folder that you can unzip and then extract wherever you want um, i made a little shortcut so now i have it right here so when you're done with that um, and you open the the ibo view it looks like this it's very clean it's very stylish i very much enjoy the design um, so uh, let's open any any molecule really so to operate in the interactive windows um, the rotation of the molecule happens with the right button of the mouse the translation is the red uh, the left and the right together like this and then if you want to zoom in or out you click on the right button and you scroll with the little wheel now if you have um, a laptop mouse pad I didn't figure out how to do the double clicking so I don't know how to uh, maybe it's just my mouse pad and like everyone has a normal one and mine is just retarded I don't know but uh, I'm using a mouse for this if you if you need to figure out how to do it can you please comment below the video because I'm kind of lost here um, okay so that's for the molecule now um, let's look at the right panel over here you have four tabs you have actions and files you have data sets which includes um, the orbitals and the frames so if we had let's say an IRC path and we had several frames uh, you could see it here uh, then we have uh, orbitals, uh, so the render the orbitals, you can change the color, etc. And render the geometry. Um, so uh, let's look at this more in details. Um, the first thing that we have is that I think the, the motto for <laughs> this entire thing was like, we should be able to fine tune anything. Literally. So here you can 
add the number to the label, you can label or not label, you can change the size of the label, which is a brilliant idea because for every publication you have to do it's like the, the little labels are never the right size. They're too big, they're too small, they're too pale, they're just, just never right. And here you can change it all and really make it look exactly like you want. Uh, what else do we have? You can change the, the size of the atoms. You can change the width of the bond. Um, it really is very, it's very flexible in terms of um, fine-tuning the the picture um, into something you, you really like. Um, okay, let's look at the orbitals. Now I will go into the data sets and I will click, I will select, let's say, the highest occupied molecular orbital. So double click on that and it renders it automatically. And now if we go into the render orbital, I think this is my favorite part, um, you can choose the colors. You can choose the colors to like whatever you want and they're beautiful colors. You just use this hue wheel and it really like how how beautiful is that? You can really select anything you want. This is beautiful. Really. You can also change the saturation so you can make it more colorful or less colorful. You can change the opacity. Uh, truly tunable um, to whatever you prefer. Uh, you can also flip the phase if that's what you need um, and just play around. It's, it's, it's fascinating how beautiful of an image you can make with this. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, um, if you go into view, and this is not very scientific, but whatever, just bear with me. If you go into view and you click on um, preset not very shiny it will make everything kind of lose its glow but then if you preset on so shiny and this literally was written here it's gonna turn into glass and this is hilarious like isn't it what who even thought about like this is just so good amazing i love it i'm in love with this ah okay and then you can change the color with I can do this all day long. Look at that. This is really fantastic. Okay, uh, so I think this is the basic of it. What else can we do? Oh yeah, um, let's go into action and files. And um, if you click here on compute, um, you can actually compute the IBOs um, uh, using whatever you have. So here I already have the the orbitals computed so I, I unclick the run hard tree fog uh, DFT and I'm just gonna click and I clicked on the run chemical analysis and I click on OK. It's very fast calculation. When it's done it's gonna save wave function computed finish and you can just close it. Now if we go into the data set um, the orbitals have changed now there's no uh, unoccupied orbitals because IBOs are only for occupied and then we can see um, the uh, the IBOs for every for every bond basically so the idea of IBO I don't want to like explain it incorrectly so I, I don't want to go into details but the idea is um, is to find um, is to to create an, a molecular orbital that would be more intuitive for chemists to, to picture. So, um, for example, here we clearly see, oh, this is a carbon-hydrogen bond, right? And this is, you can see the hybridization. It's very intuitive in that sense. So this whole idea, like this is, oh, this is clearly a double bond. And um, the whole idea of IBOs is basically that. But I think you should go ahead and read the paper. Uh, there's two of them, I think. Um, they really explain the, the the whole concept and the theory behind. It's very nice. Um, the last thing that is a bit, um, you know, a curiosity uh, is if you click on this little red button on the bottom, um, it will show you the log for the last calculation, but it also gives you um, a red button that's called mysterious red button. 
So now if you we click it, there's a window opening and it's called unsolicited life advice. Serious red buttons. You never know what they do. It's like, oh, that's cute. It's so like thoughtful and and really, oh, it's it's nice. It's like the developer cares for for the user. It's very cute. So uh, I think I'm making this way too long. So now very quickly, I want to show you how to import um, the output from Orca into here. So you can do the same analysis. Um, very simple. We have to open the command line again, because that's how Orca works. And then if you navigate towards the Orca file, you can list all the, the files in here by writing dir, so directory. And it will list all the, um, the plugins for Orca. And one of them is called Orca underscore 2MKL.exe. Um, and that's the one that, tr that we're going to use right now. So the way it works is that um, I'll make it bigger so you guys can see. Uh, you write the, the name of the plugin space, the name of the file that we're going to use without the extension and uh, space slash um, molding. Uh, so the, the name of the file is whatever you want to use, like whatever output from Orca, and, but it has to be the W, uh, the GWB file. Okay. So, um, that's the one that kind of stores all the, um, like the orbitals and stuff. Uh, so here I have, for example, the, the transition state guess, uh, GBW. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, okay. And that's it. Basically, you write the orca2mkl.exe, the name of the file without the extension, and then the little um, uh, dash molden, and you click on enter. That's it. There's no visual output just like that. But if you close it, you will get this file. Um, it's called um, molden dot input, and you can just pull it into the IBO just like that and um, that's what basically that that's all you have to do now if you go into data set orbitals you have all the orbitals um, just like from before the normal um, homo lumo from the molecular orbitals so just like that it's very simple. Um, okay, so I think that on this we will end uh, for this tutorial and next time we will compute the IBOs for the IRC of the deals out there um, and um, see what it looks like and and uh, if you have time play around this with this software it's really it's, it's a lot of fun like a lot of fun. I like it very much. Okay. On this, I think I'm done, and I'll see you next time.